Good morning. Welcome to another week of Video Sunday School. I hope that you guys have been enjoying your time at home with your families and that you're doing okay even during this time of um, just being alone at home. I hope that you guys are holding up okay. I'm looking forward to sharing another lesson with you today. I heard from several of you that the one that we did last week was really helpful to you, so hopefully these will continue to be a blessing to you and to your family. <clears throat> Do you know what from everlasting to everlasting means? Those aren't really words that we use in our everyday language, but we do read them in the Bible sometimes. Everlasting to everlasting means that something never comes to an end. It's like saying from forever to forever, okay? Most things in this life come to an end. Maybe you and your family can think together about some things in your life that don't last from everlasting to everlasting. Some things that I thought of were um, a good book. I'm always sad when a good book is finished. Um, an ice cream cone, that doesn't last forever, right? Or a vacation, or maybe even a favorite movie. All of those things come to an end. But there is something in the Bible that God tells us about that is from everlasting to everlasting. It never comes to an end. In Psalm 103, verse 17, it says, But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. God's love is forever. It never ends. It goes on and on and nothing can stop it. It is from everlasting to everlasting. Now, you probably noticed in the verse that this promise is not for everyone. We've talked earlier in this book about how some promises are for specific people in a specific time, and there are other promises in the Bible that have conditions. Those are our if you, then I will promises, right? This one is not conditional, but it is specific to one group of people. Did you notice who it was? The verse said, to those who fear him those who fear God. Now remember, when we talk about fearing God, we're not talking about being afraid of him because God is not frightening. We're talking about having a proper respect and honor and awe toward God, okay? So God will never stop loving his people. He will never stop being their God, no matter what. Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, found this out in his own personal life. You've probably heard this story before, but I'm going to repeat it for you. And you can look at it this time through the lens of God's everlasting love. Okay. After Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, Peter followed Jesus and the soldiers to the house of the high priest. Now, he didn't follow very closely because Peter was very afraid. He was afraid that he would also be arrested, okay? Peter was more afraid <clears throat> for his own safety than he was concerned about being loyal to Jesus at that time, okay? His fear was so great that when a servant girl at the house of the high priest recognized him and asked him, weren't you with Jesus too? Peter denied it and he said, woman, I don't know him. Peter was very scared. He did not love Jesus well in that time. The Bible tells us that perfect love drives out fear, but we as humans cannot love perfectly. We are sinful people, and we do become afraid. And in this story, G Peter was afraid for his own safety, and he denied even knowing Jesus. He denied him three times. And after the third time, the Bible tells us that Jesus looked at Peter, and Peter left that place, and he wept bitterly. He knew that he had sinned against Jesus, that he had not loved Jesus with a steadfast love. He had denied that he even knew Jesus or was even his friend. But that was not the end for Peter. Many days later, after Jesus had died and risen from the dead, his disciples went fishing. And when they finished fishing and they came back onto the shore again, Jesus was there. He was waiting for them, and he had cooked a fish breakfast for them. 
and he welcomed them back. And he pulled Peter aside and he asked him, Peter, do you love me? Three times Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? And three times Peter said, yes. Now Peter had pretended that he didn't even know Jesus three times. So Jesus gave him three opportunities to make it right. Jesus forgave Peter fully. With tender love, he included Peter in his plan for the new church that would begin after Jesus went back to heaven. He gave Peter a very important job. He said, teach people about me. And Peter, Jesus sorry, did not stop loving Peter, even when Peter had stopped being his friend. Jesus' love for Peter was from everlasting to everlasting, no matter what Peter did. Nothing can take away God's love, boys and girls. Nothing at all, anytime or anywhere. In Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39, it says, For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Peter learned that nothing can take away God's love, but he also learned that because of Jesus' great love for him and the Holy Spirit that Jesus sent later on, he was going to be changed as a person also, and he was going to be better able to do the work that God had for him. The next time that Peter was accused of being a friend of Jesus and told, stop talking about this Jesus, stop telling his story to everyone, Peter was bold and he said, no, I cannot stop talking about Jesus. God's love had transformed Peter from someone who was cowardly and afraid to someone who was bold and courageous and able to proclaim the gospel without fear and without reservation. God's work in your life will never end either, and his love for you is from everlasting to everlasting. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 says, I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion in the day of Jesus Christ which means that the work that God has started in your heart as his child will not stop until God has finished it. His love for you is forever, and his desire to make you into the person that he wants you to be will never stop. This is a great promise for us, boys and girls, that we belong to Christ. We know that we are his forever. Maybe you and your family can take some time this week to look up Romans 8, verses 35 through 39, and make a list together of all of the different things in your life that cannot separate you from God's love. And if you're not quite comfortable writing yet, maybe you can draw some pictures together, and then you can take a minute to thank God together for his everlasting love. I hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.